Hi everybody, this is Dr. A with another video on analytic techniques in the lab. We're going to look at osmometry in this video. So what is osmometry? The principle of osmometry is that it measures the concentration of solute particles in the solution. The more solute particles are present in that solution, the higher the osmolality of the solution will be, or the more concentrated it is. For the lab, we usually are measuring serum or urine, so the more concentrated the serum or urine is, and of course, then the lower the osmolality, the more dilute it is. And so either way, that could be a problem. Um, brain, the brain has um, osmolality sensors, and if the blood is too concentrated, it will activate the thirst mechanism and cause a release of the hormones that will conserve water. Um, and so that's a little physiology note to see there how it all ties together. And so if a nephrologist, for example, was wanting to assess what is going on with their patient um, with beyond you know, in regards to uh, the concentration of urine, uh, you know, and make sure that the blood is appropriate and all of that, that those would be tested. It would order, it would be a urine osmolality and a serum osmolality. Osmolality is most often measured by freezing point depression, which is one of the colligative properties of a solution. The fact that the more particles are in solution, the lower the freezing point is, is something we take advantage of when we salt the sidewalks in the winter time. So what what is that doing? It's increasing the amount of uh, solid particles, which are salt, in the solution, which is water or ice. And so it lowers the freezing point. So the um, ice will be liquid or be water at lower temperatures or temperatures below freezing. So it's a little practical application for you. So what are the colligative properties of a solution? They're the boiling point, osmotic pressure, vapor pressure, and the freezing point. An increase in osmolality will cause an increase in boiling point and osmotic pressure and a decrease in vapor pressure and freezing point. So um, why did we se settle on freezing point depression? So first, boiling point elevation was not favored for biological samples uh, because you get structural degradation. So as you boil a sample, you destroy all the proteins, and so you can do anything else with it. Um, osmotic pressure is just slow to equilibrate. You need large volumes. The me membrane behavior is not always reproducible, so more prone to errors. So we did not select that. Um, the vapor pressure depression is the most accurate, but it is slow and it requires very precise temperature control. And the freezing point depression, also known as the cryoscopic method, is convenient, it's rapid, and only requires small volumes, therefore that's the favored method. So osmometry is the measurement of the osmolality of an aqueous solution, such as serum plasma or urine. Um, osmotically active particles, such as glucose, urea, sodium, will increase the osmolality of the solution and affect the other four properties of a solution. So um, osmolality is a highly effective means of determining the total number of particles present in blood, urine, or other fluid but not the identity of those particles. Uh, so this can be a way sometimes of detecting antifreeze ingestion in either suicide or homicide attempts because you will have an increase in um, number of particles present, but their uh, glucose, urea, or sodium levels will be normal. And so um, we don't have a test in the lab for antifreeze. I mean, we can send it for mass spec and all that, but the average clinical lab doesn't. And if patient presents to the ER um, with possibility of antifreeze ingestion. So this would be a quick way to assess if there is a disconnect between uh, the calculated osmolality, which can be calculated uh, using the glucose, urea, and sodium values versus the measured osmolality. Uh, and then that would be the practical application there uh, for example. Uh, but of course, again, uh, nephrologists use serum and urine osmolality measurements to see how well the kidneys are concentrating urine and how well they're working. So the freezing point osmometer, um, how does it work and um, what are the principles kind of behind that or the steps, if you will? First, the sample is super cooled. So it is cooled below its freezing point. So it's, it's cooled way low. And then freezing is initiated by the little stirrer. And so as soon as it vibrates or moves, crystals form. And um, as the 
crystals form, the temperature will rise back to the freezing point and just settle at the freezing point. This is because you have the release of the heat of fusion, which causes then uh, crystallization to happen. The components of a freezing point osmometer are the sample chamber, the stirrer, the thermistor, which is what senses the temperature, and then the refrigeration chamber, which has ethylene glycol to supercool uh, that sample. And then the unit that it gives you, whether you're reading um, serum or urine, is going to be milliosmoles per kilograms of water. So there you go. That is a quick little review on uh, osmolality and the freezing point osmometer. And I will see you in the next video.